welcome back. If you're just joining us, go ahead and pause the video here, check out the rest of the series to get caught up, and then resume this segment when you're ready. For everybody else, let's dive right in. This segment is going to be packed with a few features of creating the illusion of a bullet and a shell, as well as the droid explosion and a couple of bug fixes. Let's get started. When we first start our preview, we notice that this very first blast is a little slower than the rest. We can correct this with an event to preload that sound. Go ahead and close the playtest window. Let's head over to the events tab. We're going to scroll down until we see the shoot section and the idle group. I'm going to click on idle just because I want my event to come in a little bit closer. Go ahead and add a new event. And then I'm going to nest this right under shoot. I want it to be the first event. I want at the beginning of the scene. So I can either just copy this one here or navigate to it. And then for the action, what I want to do is preload the sound. So this preload a sound, I want to choose shoot and click OK on that. So now when we test this, we see that that first fire is as fast as the rest. We also see another problem in that the rotation for the droid explosion does not match the droid itself. So let's go ahead and correct that now. In the section for the raycast, right where we create the droid hit event, let's go ahead and add an action. For the droid hit, we want to change the rotation on X. We want to set that to 90, which matches our original droid rotation. And then we can drag that up and add a new action. Same thing for droid hit. This time we're going to check the rotation on the Y axis. And for this one, the value was negative 25. Click OK on that as well. Drag that up and let's go ahead and play test that as well. So we see that one works, that one works, and they all should match now. So we see the rotation for all of the droid explosions match perfectly. This next one was rather funny because I had the mouse pointed down like this and my dog had bumped my arm indicating it was time to go out and caused me to shoot. So when that happened, I noticed that you could be pointed way down, not against the target, and still explode them. Something goofy with the Raycast, I'm not really sure. I played around with a bunch of options, but I ended up getting closer by using a community extension. Let's come up here to the Project Manager, come down to Create or Search for a new extension. We're going to type in Raycast or start typing Raycast. Choose this 3D Raycast, click to install it in your project. From here, go ahead and click Close come over to our event sheet, scroll down to where we use the Raycast, and I'm just going to copy and paste this. I don't have to do all the work twice, and then hit D to comment that out. And up here, we're going to get rid of this event, add a new condition, type in Raycast. I want to use from the camera center object to test against the ray would be the droid. Maximum distance, I was already using 1,000. So that works pretty well. Click OK on that. Let's go ahead and test this. And now you see that fix that issue. I can shoot around the droid and hitting the droid. Sometimes you do have to shoot more than once or hit it in a certain spot, but the Raycast seems to be working much better than it was before. So that one's working and I think I have one more here. Boom. All right. So that works much better, getting us closer to a production-ready first-person shooter game. After spending hours and testing every possible workaround to make G-Develop visually pleasing for the bullet and the casing, I realized that perhaps it's just not possible. I know that some other people in the community were having some issues as well, so I feel better it's not just me. That said, because we're using ray casting, the bullet, much like the crosshairs, is just an optical illusion. So with that knowledge, I'm going to head back to Blender and create my illusion there. Once you're back in Blender, you want to make sure that you're on your shoot animation, and you can test that just by hitting the spacebar and letting the animation play through. Set the animation to frame 1. 
Now let's press Shift and A. We're going to add a mesh cylinder. Hit S and let's scale this way down. GX, just bring this out a little bit. RX90, rotate that in the correct direction. Three on the numpad. GY, bring this over. And we can scale this on the Y, SY. GZ, bring this up a little bit, see what we're working with. And you're just going to try to make the size somewhat close to what the opening is, GY, like that. And then forward slash, let's focus on this for a second. Tap into edit mode, three for face select. I'm going to delete this front face. For the back phase, I'm going to hit I to inset, E to extrude, E and enter, S to scale, and then E and leave that on the Z, I to inset again, and E to bring that in a tiny bit. For the entire thing, let's right-click Shade Smooth, and let's give it some color. I'm going to add a new color here, call this one Brass. For the base color, just pick something in the yellowish range. Come down, let's bring the roughness all the way down and metallic all the way up. So we can see we very quickly have what looks like a shell casing. Let's go to the modifier properties. I want to add a bevel and just kind of clean that up a little bit. All right, so that'll be our shell casing. And we can hit forward slash to focus on that again. Now I'm just going to line this up so it's a little bit more inside as a starting position. something like that. I'm going to hit period on the numpad just to focus a little bit more. GY, just to bring that over. We could scale it up, but technically I'm leaving a little opening there for what would be the tip of the bullet. I want to hit I to set the location, rotation, and scale, so we'll do all three of those. I had upped my frames to 60, so this will be the first frame. When I go back and look through the camera lens, you can hit zero on the numpad to do that. G, Z, and so frame two, I pretty much want to come out right away. So I'm going to do G and Z, bring this up, G and X, bring this over, and set another location and rotation. And we'll see that happens pretty quickly. And then from here, our view will be something like that. We can move this one over so it's around frame four. Okay, so it'll be something like that. Just that was an easier way of doing it, I think. So I'm going to come out to about frame eight and GX on this. GZ a little bit more. Before I rotate it, I want to come up to object and set the origin to the center of this object. So now I'm going to rotate it a little bit. So R X, R Y a little bit, and then I set that location rotation, and then somewhere around frame 20, G X and G Z, and we can rotate it a little bit more, something like that. I set that location rotation. Just gonna tweak this a few more times until I have what looks like a complete animation. So G Z and R, just rotate that. And I'm going to do one more out here, GZ and GX, just somewhere around there, and maybe a tiny little rotation. Okay, so I'm going to let that play. All right, so I am going to do one more around frame 40, GZ, and just bring that all the way down, GX, bring it over some more, and I'm also going to scale it way down. So I, location, rotation, and scale this time. Yeah, around 45, I'm just going to scale it down to zero, and we can see that when we bring this here, so I'm going to highlight those all the way down and hit zero and enter on that, and then set that keyframe for just the scale. So now if I select the blaster, you can see that our casing disappears. So that's it for the casing. Come back to the center. We're on a view of numpad one or negative X. You can use the gizmo to snap, and I want to be the Y, so I'm going to press Shift, and now I can hit 9, then Shift and bring this over, 
Shift A, let's add a mesh. We can do a cone this time. S to scale this way down. S to scale it down some more. R, X, negative nine, zero. G, Y, and bring this all the way out and then just line it up and we can scale it as well. Scale, G, Z, bring that down. We just want it somewhere in the center here. Shade smooth and give that the brass color. GY, we'll have it start back just a tiny bit more. Okay, so for this one, let's go ahead for frame one. We're going to hit I, set the location, rotation, and scale. Come back to this starting point. Let's focus on this a bit and then tab into edit mode. Three for face select, E to extrude on the Z. That's fine, and then scale this. E to extrude again, let's scale it some more. Tab out of edit mode. The image that you're seeing is just the HDRI that I'm using. For light, let's set the location, rotation, and scale. So that looks pretty good. Let's come out to frame 10. G, Y, and we're just gonna bring that somewhere out there. I, set that location. G, Y, just have it go out there somewhere. Set the origin to the center of the mass surface. Set that location. 25 we'll scale it way down we'll do the same thing where we just scale it to zero enter and then set the scale on this one look through the frame again select anything else all right so both work pretty well and also disappear as they're supposed to what i want to do is go ahead and name my files f2 we're going to call this one shell for this one we're going to call it bullet once we have all of our objects highlighted, what we can see here is that our animation doesn't go beyond 45. So I'm going to reset this end frame to 45 and then export my object. We're going to come up to File, Export, GLB. Choose the location where you want to save these. We're going to call these Blaster Fire. And then for the animation, let's start from bottom to the top. We want the scene. We don't want to split the objects. For include, we want this punctual lights. We want selected objects and rendered objects. Now we can click export the file. It's kind of weird, but in GDevelop, we don't see our metallic come through. But I just wanted to show you that it's a JavaScript backend issue with GDevelop because if we use GLTF Viewer or similar tools, we can see that Blender properly exported the metallic material, so that's not an issue. So I'm not going to spend too much time on troubleshooting that because it's not a Blender or export GLB issue. Click here on Add a New Object, add a 3D model, name the 3D model Blaster Fire, navigate to where you save the file, and click OK to bring that in. We know that we're going to use 400 cubes, so shortcut, we could just change the scaling, which changes all three. If you scan for animations and it doesn't find it on the first try, don't panic. I've learned if you click apply and then go back in, now scan for animations, it's there. Let's go ahead and rename this as Blaster Fire. And for now, I'm going to set my animation to loop for testing and click apply on that. Now we can just drag this into our scene, set it to the UI layer, and preview this to see what it looks like. We can see that the bullet's coming out where it's supposed to come out, it fades the way it's supposed to fade, and also the shell is where it's supposed to be. The next steps will include switching from the idle to the fire animation and then back. Now we can go ahead and delete the blaster fire from the scene and head over to the events tab. In the events tab, let's scroll down to the shoot section. Next, what we're gonna do is create a new action for the blaster fire. We're going to create the object. For the X position, that will be the blaster center X. And for the Y, that will be the blaster center Y. And we're gonna create this on the UI layer and click okay. Let's go ahead and drag this up for the change the animation, we already have an event there. We know that we don't want to use the blaster shoot anymore. We want to use the blaster fire and change that animation to blaster fire. So if you don't recall the exact name, you can click on this switch to animation and then use the drop down to find your animation name. For the change the animation speed scale, 
we're going to do the same thing here and that'll be instead of blaster we're going to use blaster fire and i want to do one more thing here and that will be to hide the blaster for the blaster let's go ahead and hide that object because we're going to be switching between the two let's test that see what it looks like <laughs> okay so we gotta remove the looping do a quick bug fix here so for blaster fire for that animation let's go ahead and remove that loop click ok and head back to our events tab we can see that that is working as expected but we can see as we continue to fire our blaster is still visible so let's fix that as well all right so let's come up to the idle section we're going to add two events one of them we can just copy this hide blaster up and instead of hide blaster we want to hide the blaster fire and here we would want to show the blaster show the visibility click ok on that and now let's test it again perfect another successful bug fix and this section is working as expected with the two objects with separate animations looking like a single object a seamless transition between the two perfect so next let's work on our droid explosion next for our droid explosion let's click on add a new object scroll down to 3d particles emitter I wanted to test out this blue explosion. I thought that would look nice since we use the blue for the object. I'm going to rename this here to Droid Blue Explosion. We'll leave it like that. And now let's head over to our event sheet. Come down to the shoot section and we want the raycast section of this event. And we're going to create a new action for the Droid Explosion. We're going to create the event. The X position is going to be the droid hit center X. The Y position will be the droid hit center Y. And we want to leave this on the base layer. We want to do one more thing here, create a new action for the droid blue explosion. We want to set the Z elevation to match the droid hit center Z. I want to bring down this delete droid just so it's the last object. Let's go ahead and test this out. Perfect. Loving it. This is all coming together. That was everything that I was hoping to accomplish in this segment. Let's end this one with one more bug fix. I've noticed with the ray casting, when previewing at full screen, it's not working quite as expected. You have to get really close to your target. Even changing the distance of the ray cast doesn't seem to fix it. So I'm going to restrict the window size. Come up to the very top at the beginning of the scene. Let's go ahead and add an action. We're going to look for enable window resizing and we're going to set that to no. Let's quickly test this again and that works as expected. We can't resize and we're able to hit our targets as expected. So perfect. So that's it for this segment. We've covered a lot of ground, we've fixed a lot of bugs, and we've explored a lot of workaround options. I hope that you will join me in the next segment as we continue to build out our game. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe, which supports my channel. Feel free to leave me a comment below, whether it's related to this or something that you hope to see in a future segment. I look forward to hearing from you and reading all of your comments. We'll see you next time.